Hi, welcome to the Animal Diversity Lab. Today we need to discuss characteristics of the animal kingdom and also the characteristics of the nine major phyla and some examples of animals that are classified into each. Let's get started. Characteristics that distinguish the animal kingdom from the other four kingdoms are that animals are multicellular, there is an absence of cell walls, Animals generally have the ability to move or locomotion in at least one stage of their life cycle. We start to see the development of nervous tissue in some of the lower animals as it progresses to a sophisticated one in the higher animals. Animals reproduce sexually and some have a pretty complicated life cycle that may involve incomplete or maybe even a complete metamorphosis. Animals cannot make their own food so therefore they have an a heterotrophic mode of nutrition. Now that we have laid down the characteristics of what an animal is, let's look at a list of the nine major animal phyla. Here we see first animal being sponges in phylum Porifera. Next, Cnidaria, which examples of animals in phylum Cnidaria would be jellyfish, sea anemones, and our sea corals. Platyhelminthes, these are our flatworms, and examples of this would be a tapeworm. Next, Nematoda, our roundworms. Analita, segmented worms. Phylum Mollusca, here we will find our shelled animals, our mollusks. Arthropoda, crustaceans, arachnids, and insects. Echinodermata, sea stars, sand dollars, sea urchins, and then lastly phylum chordata. Here we find our fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and here we are, humans or mammals. Let's move into each phylum and take a look at its distinguishing characteristics. First we have phylum periphera, first animal, the sponges. All sponges are aquatic and most are marine. Adults are sessile, that means they are anchored into a substrate and don't really have any motility, but the larval form are motile. Sponges are suspension feeders, meaning they, they filter out food from the water that moves through their pores and they have no real symmetry. Here's an example of a sponge. Take a look because you'll have a lab activity next where you will have to classify various animals into their respective phyla. Cnidaria. Phylum Cnidaria includes our jellyfish, sea anemones, and our sea corals. They're aquatic and mostly marine. They have radial symmetry. One opening of the digestive system, known as a gastrovascular cavity, and there's two body forms, one being the polyp, which is a stationary form. An example of this would be in the sea anemones, and in the medusa body form, this would be the free floating as seen in the jellyfish. My cnidaria are characterized by their stinging cells, known as cnidocytes. And here are two examples. Here to the upper left would be the jellyfish, which would be the medusa body form. And then here on the lower right, a sea anemone. You can see the radial symmetry and also the tentacles that hold the, the stinging cells, the cnidocytes. Next we have platyhelminthes, my flatworms. We have free living flatworms and also parasitic flatworms. My free-living flatworms, the planarians, we see their bodies are flattened. They have a one opening digestive system. Tissues are organized into organs and organ systems, so we're seeing where we're becoming more elaborate in the animal structure and also bilateral symmetry in the adult form. My parasitic flatworms would be the blood flukes and tapeworms. These parasitic flatworms they're going to derive their nutrients from a living host. And here in the upper left, you will see an example of a tapeworm. And then in the lower right, there's a free living flatworm, a planarian. 
and it, as you can locate, look at the eye spots, which is an arrangement of some light sensitive photoreceptive cells, and they're known as eye cups. Next, nematoda, my round worms. Here they are bilateral symmetry. Most are free living, but some are parasitic. My parasitic flatworms would include the hookworms and pinworms, ascaris, which are intestinal roundworms, and filarial worms, which we will see as heartworms in dogs. We will all see some plants are subject to parasitic nematodes as they live in um, the soil and attack the, the root system of our plants. Nematodes have a complete digestive tract beginning at the mouth and ending at the anus but also they do not have a true body cavity so they have a, what is called a pseudocelum. Here's an example of a nematode, my roundworm, with a complete digestive tract having both a mouth and anus. They are surrounded by a hard thickened cuticle as well. Here are the annelids, my segmented worms. The body consists of segments, a head, the segmented body, and then ending in the terminal portion. Body segments are partitioned off from one another and filled with the fluid. So therefore they have what is called a hydrostatic skeleton. My polychaetes are marine. They have appendages on each body segment and sometimes they act as respiratory systems. My leeches are fresh water. They're carnivorous and probably all know that they feed on blood so they're considered ectoparasites. And then lastly my buddies of the soil, my earthworms, so they feed on decaying organic matter and they're known as my decomposers and they're wonderful friends of recycling in the ecosystem. So here in the upper left you can see the earthworm that is moving through the, moving through the soil and then on the lower right there's a leech attached to a human arm sucking the blood. They release an anesthetic and an anticoagulant. My mollusks. Phylum mollusca. The basic mollusk body plan consists of a foot, which is a muscular tissue, the visceral mass, which is an, a region in the body where my organ systems are located, and then the mantle, which consists of two folds of skin that surrounds the visceral mass and it secretes the material that builds the mollusk shell. Phylum mollusca is characterized into classes based on the shape and use of this muscular foot. So let's look at gastropods, my snails, cephalopods, squid, octopus, and then bivalves, clams, scallops, and oysters. Gastropods means belly foot. Single shell, or these animals may even lack a shell, like in slugs. They are herbivorous, and so they move through plant material using their radula, which is a rasping tongue. They have rasping teeth arranged in a tongue-like organ that scrapes through the plant material and pulls it into their mouth as they feed. Next, my cephalopods. Cephalic means head, so this is head foot. Well-developed heads with advanced eyes. The foot is modified into tentacles with suction cups for grasping, like we'll see in our squid and our octopus. They are marine carnivores. They have a much reduced shell, like in the squid, or no shell at all, like in the octopus. Lastly, we have bivalve, which means hatchet foot, and they use this muscular foot for burrowing down into the sands in the ocean. So they have two shells. It's a hen shell. They lack a head. They lack eyes, except in the scallops, and they lack that radula. They are suspension feeders and they use two siphons for food collection and then expelling of the water. So here's an example of a gastropod in the upper left, a snail. An example of a cephalopod, a squid, in the lower right. Here we have our, our phylum arthropoda my crustaceans, arachnids, and insects. This phylum is huge. This is the most numerous of all animals. 70% of animals are insects, 
and within the 70% of all animals, 30% of those are beetles. Arthro means joint, poda or pod, leg, so jointed appendages, arthropoda. We see bilateral symmetry, or symmetry in this group and they have a segmented body plan with a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. They have a chitinous exoskeleton with a flexible polysaccharide. Molting does take place, or ectasis, which is the shedding of the old exoskeleton, and then they grow a new one. This is due to the increase in body size. The exoskeleton becomes too small, so therefore they must develop and grow a new one. Let's look at some of the groups within phylum Arthropoda. Millipedes and centipedes. These animals are, are made up of many, many segments, and on each segment there is attached the jointed appendages. Next we have the chalicerates, my horseshoe crabs. Also the arachnids, which includes spiders, scorpions, mites, and ticks. This group has mouth parts that is adapted for drawing in externally digested food. Now my crustaceans. We know these, the lobsters, crayfish, and shrimp, little tiny freshwater animals, the daphnia, crabs, and even pill bugs. They actually have exoskeleton made up of chitin, but it's supplemented by calcium salts as well. Then finally, my huge group, the insects, a very, very diverse group. And one characteristic of insects is the ability for flight in some, and also very complex life cycles that may include a complete metamorphosis or maybe an incomplete metamorphosis as it moves from the egg to the adult stage. Here's an example of a butterfly which does undergo complete metamorphosis from the caterpillar onto the adult stage. And then in the lower right, here is a millipede. You see the segmented body and two appendages or jointed appendages attached to each segment. Next we have Echinodermata. These animals are marine and they show radial symmetry in the adult form but in the larval state the symmetry is bilateral. Locomotion is by a water vascular system and these animals also have what is known as an endoskeletal system made up, made up of calcareous plates. Some examples of animals in phylum Echinodermata are sea stars, sand dollars, my sea urchins, and sea cucumbers. Here we see on the upper right the sand dollar with its two feet and spines and then on the lower left a sea cucumber that makes its way across the sea floor. And then finally we have phylum chordata. My tunicates, fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. Most animals in this group are my vertebrates because they have a backbone but there are a few that have rudimentary structures or no backbone at all and so those are my invertebrates. There are four characteristics that animals have in phylum chordata. They all have a dorsal hollow nerve cord, a notochord cord that is a hollow nerve running along the animal's back. They have gill structures behind the mouth and those are known as pharyngeal slits and having a muscular post anal tail. So my invertebrates in phylum chordata may be an example of my tunicates. These are marine animals and we also know them as sea squirts. My vertebrates would include my fish and we know fish have gills as respiratory passages and then my amphibians, my newts, salamanders, frogs and toads. These are terrestrial animals and they are aquatic because they need water for reproduction. They have to go back to water for sperm to be able to reach the egg. They also can breathe through their skin, so their skin is part of their respiratory system. They have fairly underdeveloped lungs. 
Now my reptiles have a more developed lung, lungs that are more efficient, and here we see our snakes, lizards, turtles, and crocodiles. The amniotic egg evolved, and so now my reptiles, they have a protected shelled egg, and so they, they are not required to go back to water to have fertilization take place. They have internal fertilization, and now the embryo is protected by a shell so they can live their life on land. They also have a dry scaly skin which prevents them from losing too much water. Now we have our birds. These are my winged reptiles that evolved out of the dinosaurs that survived extinction. And birds have beaks and they lack teeth. Birds also lay eggs and they also have the scaly skin as the reptiles do and it's still apparent on parts of their body. And then lastly we have our mammals which bear fur or hair. They nourish their young with milk with most having mammary glands and their type of teeth dictate their diet where if they have more molars they'll be more herbivorous or more canine tearing teeth meat eaters. And here's some examples of Phylum chordata. How about a reptile, an alligator turtle? And then we have an owl, the bird. And then in, in the lower area, my furry bunny, which would be a mammal. So now we've taken a look at all of our nine major animal phyla in kingdom Animalia. My periphera, the sponges. Cnidaria, examples, jellyfish, sea anemones, my sea corals, platyhelminthes, my flatworms, nematoda, my roundworms, annelida, segmented worms, mollusca, my mollusks, arthropoda, my millipedes and my centipedes, including chelicerates, crustaceans, and insects, echinodermata, sea stars, sand dollars, and sea urchins, and then lastly, phylum chordata, fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals.